So hello everybody. Welcome to the HLAA Diablo Valley chapter <coughs> meeting. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ann Thomas and I'm the president of our chapter. And all of you I'm sure realize by now that you can't host a Zoom meeting, one person doing it very well, and we have chapter leaders behind the scenes who are also helping out today. And I would like to go ahead and introduce them so that you know who they are. So one of our chapter members, um, a leader, just had to leave the room, so when he comes back, um, we'll introduce him. So first we have Jill McFadden. And Jill, can you just say hi so that um, your face gets the surrounding? Hi, everybody. Oh, good. Okay, so there's Zohair Chiba. Zohair, can you say hi? Uh, hello. Welcome. And Zohair's our vice president, and Jill's our secretary. And we have Alan Katsura, who does all of our tech support. Morning, everyone. Okay, so I don't see Walt Bateman here, and he's our treasurer today. Maybe he'll come later. So everybody's here, and I'm thinking everybody's excited to hear about Ava. But before we go ahead and have Peter give his presentation, we'd like to go ahead and give uh, directions on how to use Zoom for people that this may be their first time using Zoom. By now, most of you are old hats. But we want to make sure that everybody is really comfortable um, using this format because it's not going away. And I personally absolutely adore it. It's so much easier for me to read lips and with the captions and everything else. So the directions that we're going to give for Zoom are for your desktop only. If you are using an iPad, a tablet, iPhone, Android, these don't apply to you. The things that we're going to talk about is how to view the captions, a full transcript, the chat window, and to raise your hand for Q&A. If you look at the bottom of your window, you should see a toolbar that looks like the picture in black. And the CC icon is circled. You need to click on the CC icon and then a subsequent window will open up. In that window are three options. One is click on subtitles, and you need to do that to turn them on. If you need to have the subtitles larger, you can make them larger by clicking on the subtitle settings, and you can increase the font size. There's a slider there. You also have the option of viewing a full transcript and that can be very helpful because, you know, for all of us with hearing loss, sometimes we don't realize that we missed something until it's already passed. And the captions that are below the slides or on the slides have already passed what was said too, so we don't have anything to reference. So if you're viewing the full transcript, you can quickly scan back over that and go, Oh, what was that phrase or what was that word? So it can be really helpful. So the chat window is available in our meetings and we know that people like to say hello to everybody that they know as their friends, that they can't do it in person. So please feel free to do that. Um, the chat window is normally in a fixed position if you would like to be able to drag it anywhere on your screen, there is a pop-out chat window, a uh, pop-out chat option that looks like the square box that you're showing on the screen. If you click the downward facing arrow, which is called a carrot, it'll another window will open up and it says pop out. And when you click on pop out, you can move that anywhere you would like on your screen. And obviously, you want to move the chat away from where you have your captions, because otherwise you won't be able to read your captions. You can also change the font size of the ca uh, chat window and the keyboard shortcut on a Mac as you press Command Plus or Command Minus. If you have a PC, it's Control Plus or Control Minus. 
And obviously, plus means they get bigger and minus means they get littler. So we will want everybody to use the chat. Feel free to do that. Since our meetings are open to the public and they're now on the HLAA national calendar, um, we'd like to ask that people identify yourself by name and say where you're from so that people have some idea who, the, who those names are that they might not be familiar with. And when I'm in another HLAA meeting, it's really fun for me to see where everybody is coming from all over the country. So I hope you enjoy the same thing. Now, I've never had an international person attend our, one of our meetings. I think that would be really fun. So we're going to have Q&A, and we're sure everybody's going to have tons of questions for Peter. So we have a lot of people in the meeting. If we only had five people, you could just raise your hand like this, and it would work. But since we have many more than that, we're going to ask everybody to raise their hand. And where that feature is, is in the reactions. So when you click on the reaction button, the bottom most option says raise your hand. When you raise your hand, a hand shows up in your thumbnail. Uh, Alan, can you raise your hand for me? Okay, so Alan and Jill, see some people raised their hands, so it makes it easy for the moderators to identify who raised their hand first. And it also shows up in the participant screen for the hosts and the co-hosts. And that order happens in the manner, that, the order that people raise their hand. So that means that ideally you would get called on in the order you raised your hand. There's also an option here with, when you share the screen. And this is from a previous meeting of ours and you can adjust the screen size. So on one side, you will see the PowerPoint presentation, and then you see the thumbnail or the picture of the person who's talking at that time. See that, that place that's circled there? There are two vertical lines that run up and down. If you take your cursor over those two lines, you can slide the windows to be any size you want. So if you need, a bigger window of the participant to help assist you with lip reading, just make it bigger. And this is, this is a, and yep. excuse me just a moment. Jackie, do you have a question or did you just forget to lower your hand? You have to unmute yourself. I guess Jackie lowered her hand. Okay, so a problem all of us have is, you know, if you're like me, when you get nervous or excited, you tend to speak faster. Well, when you speak faster and you're with hard of hearing people, it's like impossible for us to understand anything. So we'd like to remind everybody to speak slower, and if somebody's speaking too fast, well, we'll remind you, don't worry. And it's also helpful for the captioner because the slower we speak, the easier it is for Corey to be able to accurately transcribe what we're saying. We'd like to let people know that external microphones help tremendously with the audibility of people's voice with Zoom. I use a blue external microphone. If you don't have one for this meeting, um, we advise that you get them to assist people who are hard of hearing and go ahead and connect it next time. We have quite a few announcements um, and we're gonna do the announcements first so then we can totally focus on Peter's presentation. Of course, the next big thing coming up we have the Bay Area and Long Beach Virtual Walk for Hearing. It's going to take place Saturday, June 12th, which unbelievable is, I think that's next Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, and you can actually start connecting at 845. It'll actually begin at 9 o'clock. So Jill, 
who's our walk captain, is going to have some encouraging messages to have everybody help us. I just wanted to remind everybody about why we walk. Maybe the single biggest reason is because we have an invisible disability and we want to make it visible. And the way that we can do that is to raise public awareness about hearing loss. We also want to promote hearing health. Raise funds for educational and awareness programs. You know, we're a nonprofit. Our chapter's a nonprofit. HLA is a nonprofit. We don't sell things. So we rely on everybody's donations to keep ourselves going. And so the more money we have, the greater potential we have to be able to do better things in the community. So I really would like to have public service announcements. I would like to have some major ads in newspapers, and those all cost money. And we also advocate for policies and support for people with hearing loss. So we need to have you donate, get ready, set, and walk. And now, Jill, it's your time to put it in your little plug. Oh, <laughs> well, I've been having a great time fundraising and um, we've done quite well. I'm actually on the leaders list. I'm, a, I'm the second from the bottom, but I'm still on it. So I'm, it's very exciting. Um, I'm gonna send out another email to everybody to explain how to register to walk, to be at the walk. Cause a lot of the donors, my donors have um, ask me, how do we see it? And um, so I'll, I'll send out instructions on how to do that. And I hope to see a lot of you there. It's going to be fun that we have speakers ready to go. And Anne, are you going to be moderating? Actually, um, I have a piece that's already been pre-recorded that I'm thanking all the sponsors. Okay, great. And we'd like to remind everybody, you know, sometimes when it's time to make a donation, people think that small donations don't matter, but they, oh, they do. do. The largest number of people in the United States who give donations are the small donors. That's what supports all of the good works that we do in America. So please don't feel inhibited about a small donation if that's what you're comfortable giving. We just want you all to give. I hope to see you all there. Okay, so that's next weekend. And then immediately following that, we have the HLA National Convention. It's June 24th through 26th, 2021. And it's a little different this year than last year. Last year, it was completely free. This year, there's a nominal fee of $35 if you register before June 15th. And then it's going to go up to $45. So everybody... Get your early bird registration and save 10 bucks. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend, my colleague, and the co-founder of Ava. Um, I've known Peter since, oh gosh, when Ava was a dream when everybody was putting together the beta on it. And I've been able to experience all the advancements and how accurate it's become. And I'm thrilled to have Peter with us today. And Peter, it's all yours. And I, I'm going to get you have control of the screen, I think. Can you go ahead and share your? Uh, yep. Yep. All right. Let me Oh, actually, the uh, I do need to be able to the share the screen. I don't think I have uh, permission yet. Because I, I think I'm still a participant, perhaps. No, I think we made you co-host. Okay, let me try again. Oh, no, hang on. That's my fault. Sorry. No, that's all fine. Okay, now you're co-host. You should be able to share. Okay, great. Here. Here we go. Okay, good. <clears throat> Can you see the full screen? So in the top, you see the slide, and then in the bottom, you see my captions. 
is that working for everybody? So, Peter, right. are the are the captions under the um, Avis screen? Are those Avis captions? Correct. Did you want me to turn them off for now, or? Well, no. It's kind of fun. So, yeah. So my. So everybody, you can see so that you know what's happening there. The big captions all the way on the bottom are our live captioner Corey. The smaller captions above that are Avis captions that Peter's using here as a demonstration for accuracy, right? Yes, uh, but I, you know, I, this is also just sort of standard protocol for me when I'm doing a presentation, I put captions up uh, because it's not always the case that Zoom captions are made available. Um, so if it's distracting, I'm happy to also move them away from the screen for now and then it can be part of my demonstration later. So I don't know if anyone has a preference or if it's potentially distracting for people because I don't mind as long as everyone has access to this conversation. That's what matters, right? Um, so whatever is the preference, honestly. Leave them. Okay. <laughs> cool. So thanks. Uh, and thanks for the introduction. Thanks for having me today. Um, and um, it's, you know, it's, for me, it's always exciting to speak with uh, different chapters of the HLA, but uh, more importantly, people um, like yourself, who um, ultimately we've built this company for, you know, and as Anne was pointing out, we started quite some time ago. And I think there might be a question uh, from Walt. Should I pause for a second here? Because I see a hand being raised. I don't know. Uh, Walt, do oh. you have a question? Walt, right now you uh, are muted. So you'd have to uh, unmute yourself on Zoom first. Uh, you're still muted right now, Walt. So um, in the bottom left corner, you'd have to click on the microphone icon. Okay. Um, Walt, can you put your what you wanted to say in the chat? So we can't understand you. I'm because... trying to lip read. Maybe I think he says I don't want to. I didn't want to say anything necessarily. Ah, perfect. Okay. Yes. Now we can hear you. I'm confused with two sets of captions. Oh, they're overlapping each other. Okay, so thank you for that, Walt. I appreciate you pointing that out. So what we'll do for now is I'm gonna let let mine run, but I'm just gonna uh, move them away from the screen. So now you should be able to just see one set of captions, if I'm not mistaken. Does that help, Walt? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. Um, so, so yeah, I guess where I was, um, uh, what I was going to say is just that it's, it's, it's great to be connecting to, uh, to the people who ultimately we are building this company for and the services we're building and working on to improve every day, um, are ultimately, you know, designed to potentially benefit, uh, you in your everyday life. And I'm going to speak more about that, but that's why I'm also uh, always uh, happy when I get to, to, to interface and talk to, to you. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, let me just jump in and give you a little bit like short backstory. I think some of you, or maybe even most of you have already heard of Ava previously, uh, maybe even tried it out or used it. Um, so uh, I won't, I won't spend too much time on that, but I'll talk a lot about like sort of what are the the latest developments and, and things that we're focused on uh, today. Um, yeah, let me go in uh, actually. Okay, there we go, that works. So so real quick, an introduction of myself, but uh, more importantly, my two uh, co-founders at Ava. So um, on the left side of the screen um, is our uh, CTO, our technical co-founder, um, Skinner, who is from uh, Taiwan originally and who um, became deaf when he was two years old. Um, and uh, Skinner is an incredible human being, first of all, but also uh, an incredible developer. So he has a lot of technical knowledge and skill. Um, and he has actually helped us to build the very first prototypes of this app uh, of Ava and throughout has you know, been such an important part of our mission. 
Um, and then on the right hand side is Thibaut. Uh, Thibaut is originally from France, as you might be able to tell from his name. Um, he's the CEO of Ava and um, Thibaut is actually born in a deaf family. So both his parents and his sister are fully deaf. And he grew up with sign language as his first language, um, French sign language that is, um, which actually has a, a significant overlap with uh, American sign language. Uh, for those who, who didn't know that already. Um, so, you know, it's funny when he's signing in, 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 uh, in the US, sometimes he'll throw in a couple of French signs and then, uh, you know, people might get confused a little bit, but uh, <laughs> he's learning that also pretty quickly. Anyway, so I want to say like Skinner and Thibault are really the foundation of the story and the mission behind Ava. Um, myself, I'm from the Netherlands. I have a background in building engineering. Um, so engineer by trade, I love technology. And I was very much in search of a mission where technology can benefit uh, people when I met Thibaut and Skinner. And so the three of us basically embarked on a mission. Um, and initially it was not meant to be a company. It was us working uh, on the side while we're all studying um, at Berkeley and in, in San Francisco. Um, and it, it just kind of escalated into a company. <laughs> so, um, and, and really the foundation beyond their personal story is that one, when we were out there and speaking to uh, individuals who uh, are hearing challenged, some who are fully deaf, some hard of hearing, uh, age-induced, noise-induced, like the, the, the many stories and many uh, uh, different people who are challenged today in their everyday communication uh, because of their hearing loss um, and really starting to understand the bigger picture of that problem and the fact that that's actually a very wide, like a common uh, challenge and not just for those people who, who, who experience this, but also their family and friends who at times don't really know how to best respond, right? And so it's, it's a pretty large, uh, obviously, uh, a challenge that we're trying to tackle. Um, and that's why, like, so after us working in the evenings and weekends while studying, we slowly sort of built this into like something that looked more like a startup and, um, and, and the solution that we came up with, which I'm going to talk about, of course, um, is called AVA. And what it stands for is essentially audio visually accessible, which is based on the realization that there's a lot of advancements in hearing aids, cochlear implants, in that technology, which is fantastic to actually be able to see and experience. Um, but we also know that those solutions will still not tackle all of our challenges. They don't, they're not applicable to everybody, but even if they are, there are situations where they might just amplify the noise. And so how can we provide a different um, uh, sort of language channel, like, or, or, or sorry, channel of information through the visual uh, component, right? So through text in this case. And so our mission centers around this, which is how can we make the world 24 seven accessible for people who uh, are hearing challenged. That means anywhere, anytime, and for everybody. <laughs> and with that said, and before I go into showing you sort of what we have built and developed over the past seven years, um, I'd love to ask you this question. Um, and I'd love for people to, to provide if maybe in the chat or even speak up and and, and, and talk about or give us a few examples of, you know, what are still challenges that you experience or perhaps even what are challenges that have come up in the past year because a lot of our world has shifted to digital meetings. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've been to many HLLA chapter meetings in person, <laughs> but of course this is a whole different environment for everybody. So I guess my question to you all is, what are today your biggest challenges when it comes to um, not being able to fully understand or, or, or follow the interactions that you uh, partake in um, on an everyday basis? I don't know if, I, I can't actually see the chat right now, so I'm not sure if there's people already providing some, uh, some, some points, but maybe I should just go out of my... Um, 
presentation mode. Whoops. Um, Peter. Okay. Yeah. So how about if I read the question, read the okay. comments to you? Okay, so the first person says getting a host to activate captions in Zoom meetings. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yep. I have a huge one because for those of you who are new here during the pandemic, I've gotten two cochlear implants and my mission is communication access and healthcare settings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody totally. else have something. So here's another one, Peter. Being able to understand in restaurants and other noisy environments. Yep. Situation Definitely. where doctors and nurses still use masks, fear of missing something important. Healthcare. Foreign speakers on cell phones. Yeah. Phone calls. Phone calls. Foreign speakers is a big one, yeah. So, so first of all, thanks uh, for those who are providing those uh, those different challenges, and that's very helpful uh, for me. Uh, I also would like to see, you know, and and, and I'll, I'll talk to maybe how Ava addresses some of these, um, and um, yeah, I think, I mean, from my experience in speaking with you know, a lot of uh, organizations in the past year, um, whether it's on the educational side or uh, corporations, different types of organizations, but also directly with people uh, with hearing loss, obviously the whole mask uh, uh, introduction has been a big challenge for everybody. Um, and, and we've seen efforts in different places with transparent or translucent masks to tackle some of that. Um, sometimes, you know, there's only few masks that actually work well because a lot of them, they uh, condensate or how do you say that? Like they, uh, they yeah, you can't really st still see uh, much of, of the people's uh, lips. So um, I think that's just really, if, you know, there's obviously a whole set of challenges before COVID, but with COVID and the social distancing, the masks, the virtual meetings with people having their cameras turned off and to what it, what was already being inputted, the fact that people might not always turn the captions on, um, you know, the world's just gotten less accessible for everyone, right? So it's it's something we're also trying to to address and, and learn from. Um, I don't know if there's other input, but I can I can sort of continue with the presentation and then address some of these things that were mentioned. So thanks thanks for your input there. Um, Cool. So um, introducing Ava. So Ava, originally we started with a mobile application. Now we've also uh, developed a web application and a desktop application. So there's multiple platforms, if you will, um, with the core purpose of showing you who says what in a conversation, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction when you go to your doctor's appointment or it's a meeting with multiple people involved uh, perhaps it's a, a family dinner uh, for Thanksgiving. And as you can see in the screen here, part of the idea is, or the orig original idea of Ava is when we have these different speakers, and this is obviously also one of the biggest challenges for, for most individuals with hearing loss, is when there are multiple speakers around the table and I'm trying to lip read the person in front of me, and somebody to my left or to my right starts talking, I'm just missing the words they just said. And that's how I very quickly get behind in the conversation and it's exhausting. So, you know, one of the ideas here is how can we actually visually show those different speakers? And so we try to do that by using different colors, color coding the different speakers um, that are partaking in the conversation. So that's the basic, um, uh, sort of, or the beginning of Ava. And, you know, well, while we're developing this tool, we also try as much as we can to listen to people like yourself. Uh, Anne is actually a great person for feedback. <laughs> Sometimes very critical, but that's even better. That's the best feedback we can get. Um, and so thanks to Anne, some of these features and, and, and developments actually have taken place. Um, but, but basically to say that, you know, we're developing and designing this 
in collaboration with our users. Um, and that's an important part, I think, of, of how Ava exists and, 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 and continues to grow. And so some of these features, I think the ones I want to point out here is that it is possible in some situations where you don't have a connection to the internet or to a Wi-Fi uh, service that your phone is offline, you can still use it. Uh, you can still use the Ava app to get captions. Um, furthermore, you know, for, for someone like Skinner, who I talked about, my co-founder, he actually has the ability because he doesn't verbally communicate to type and then have the app voice it out. So that's what we call text to speech, which actually is kind of shown a little bit in this screen here. Um, there's other, other things that I will kind of talk about in the next few slides. So I'm just going to um, and actually, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of demonstrate uh, quickly sort of what Ava mobile looks like um, on my phone here. And I should be able to share my screen in a different way. Maybe before I do so, let me give you two uh, um, slides that kind of give you a little bit of a sense. So this is me when I had short hair earlier during, <laughs> during this pandemic and I did not want to go to hairdresser. <laughs> Um, what you can see here is that uh, I'm, I'm just basically speaking into the, into the phone and it's capturing directly what I'm saying. This by, by itself is not something very novel. Everyone has seen this uh, a lot now, right? So um, the next slide here is, um, is actually a, an, an example of a language translation situation. So she's actually speaking in Spanish and uh, it's being captioned in English. So that's another you know, feature. It's not actually something that we are very focused on because again, our focus is on how can we make the understanding, the real-time understanding better for a deaf or hard of hearing individual, but it's just something we are able to deliver because the core technology exists. And so it is actually possible to speak with people in different languages back and forth using Ava. So that might be helpful if you can actually take the flight again and go uh, on, on, a, on a holiday trip to, I don't know, Italy or somewhere else, uh, uh, what, whatever is on the bucket list. Um, so let me share my screen, uh, my phone screen, so you can um, see my, I think this should work here. This one, let's try. There we go. All right. Can everyone see um, the phone screen? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Testing one, two. All right, so here, so what I'm uh, doing now is, uh, this is the phone that I have in my hands. Um, there's a little bit of a delay uh, in terms of when the captions show up on the computer because I'm using Zoom's broadcasting feature. Um, and this is me basically saying, don't worry, our latency is really good. <laughs> uh, but the basic use of Ava is using your mobile phone. And I'm guessing that most of you have a smartphone um, these days. Um, the, the microphone that we use per default is the one that's in the bottom of the device. It's the same microphone as people would use when they make a phone call. And um, what's nice about one of the features that we've designed based on the user feedback is that if I point the microphone towards the speaker, then it flips the phone. Uh, sorry, it flips the screen. So that way I can still easily read along. So imagine that I'm walking up to uh, my doctor who's trying to tell me, uh, you know, about the medication I'll, I'll need to get at the pharmacist. I'm going to go up to the doctor and I'm going to hold the microphone up to him or her. And then I'm going to read uh, easily kind of continue to read along that way. And by pointing the microphone towards them, I increase the accuracy of the captions. That's why I would want to do that. So anyway, that's just a, an easy, quick uh, feature that I wanted to kind of demonstrate here. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. And I'll go back to my slides because there's a couple more things on uh, the mobile site I want to show if I can figure out a way to share again here. Yep. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that we have a web application and a desktop application as well. 
With that, it's possible to use Ava on any device pretty much, whether it's Android or iOS. So you don't have to have an iPhone. You can also have a Samsung or another type of Android device. Um, it also works on tablets and on laptops. Laptops would be a Mac or Windows computer um, and then on tablets, the same uh, iOS and Android. So most devices are compatible with Ava today. Um, if yours isn't, then let us know and we can see if we can make it happen. One thing here um, that, is, that is really important and, and I think one of the key uh, features that I would say differentiate Ava from perhaps some of the other um, speech to text options or solutions you've seen out there is that with Ava, and I, I just mentioned how it can be used on, on any device, you can connect also devices to one another. So that means that if I am say meeting up with a friend or with a colleague, I have Ava on my device and I can connect my device with their device so that I can see what they're saying by them speaking into their uh, phone. So I'll demonstrate that so you have an idea of, of, of kind of what that looks like. But the point is that you can actually connect any number of people together. So that means when you're in that family dinner or in that meeting with multiple people, everyone can be connected on Ava so that you get a more accurate transcript and you actually would see who's speaking. So the different speakers, um, and actually this is a just a quick video um, where, um, I'll, I'll speak to this a bit more in a second actually. Um, so, Maybe quick, quick example again. This is an, this is a, a someone who's scanning my QR code, and I'm going to show you what this actually looks like. But the idea here is that whoever is joining you on Ava does not necessarily need to download the app. So it's not the case that the other people, your friend or colleague, has to download any software. They can simply connect through the web application, through a web page, essentially. Um, and then, okay, so, so let me actually go and show you on my phone uh, what this looks like, and then I'll continue uh, with, see if that works again. There we go. I think so. Share. Ah, here we go, yeah, sorry. I was a bit too quick there. Okay, so this is my phone and um, this is kind of where we left off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect with another phone that I have uh, here. So I have two phones here. And in this case, both of these devices have Ava. So this would be maybe my friend who already knows about it and has installed it as well. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is on this phone, which is the phone of my friend, he or she is going to open Ava on their device. And then I'm going to ask them, okay, for us to be able to connect, show me your QR code. So this, every account has a QR code. So let me actually do that. Um, and and what, I, what I can do actually is I can show you on this screen what it looks like. So if I tap on the screen here in the bottom, there's a little icon. It says add. And did you have, yeah. is it not visible? Um, can you explain what a QR code is? many of our um, people present may not know what that is. Okay, yeah, I apologize. So um, essentially a QR code is, um, is sort of, it's, it's actually quite hard to explain, I think. <laughs> it's a static, it's like an image with a, um, it's almost like a, a barcode on a, on a product you would buy in, in, a, in a grocery store. But instead of the barcode, the QR code is sort of uh, uh, there's a, there's a, some information embedded in that code that allows you to scan it, and then some action will take place. In this case, the so let me I'm just gonna pull it up so you can see also what it looks like. So there's on the left hand side here it's a scan QR code. So I'm gonna click on that. So this is what the QR code actually looks like. And what this very QR code does is it is it's a, it's connected to my Ava account. So I, as an Ava user, have an Ava account, a username, and a password, it, which associates to my Ava profile, if you will. And this QR code is unique 
to my Ava account. So each Ava user has their own QR code. So if my friend scans this code with their phone, what it does is that phone is now gonna know, oh, that's Peter, I'm gonna connect those two devices. So let me show you what that looks like. So on this phone, I've also opened the QR code. I'm gonna put it down here. And then what you'll see um, on my screen is I'm going to go over to this phone. I don't know if you can see the camera on the top of that uh, screen. So as soon as I go to that QR code, it went pretty quick, but it recognized it immediately and the app crashed. <laughs> that was not meant to happen. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so we're going to try that again. And maybe it's a good thing that it happened because that way we can, we can actually see what I, what I just did. So I'm going to open the QR code again on my phone, open the QR code. And I do the same on the other device. This is the, the device of my friend and I'm going to hover over it. Okay. That was very quick again. So as soon as I see the QR code or the camera sees the QR code, it's going to make the connection. And based on this experience that just happened, I'm going to have to go back to our product team and tell them that we have an issue because it's the second time it actually crashed, which is not supposed to happen. So that part of the flow, don't remember that. <laughs> um, but what you saw briefly is that when I was speaking into the other phone, it shows up as a different color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two phones in a different way and see if that actually works. Um, and it actually gives me an opportunity to also show you that you can connect with each other, not just by using a QR code. There's different ways to do so. One of them, if I go back to this little ad icon, is to say, okay, let me look at my contact list. So right here, Ava contacts. And then I can see there that my friend here, PC, that's actually myself on this phone, the other phone, is online because it's a green connect um, um, icon. So I'm going to click on that. And it actually connected the two of us. And there's something happening. I don't know what. Maybe it's because, well, I, I'm going to have to investigate that but it's not working exactly as I was hoping. So I'm going to try something else, which is um, I'm going to connect with my iPad here. So let me do this real quick. Peter, do I you just want, want to connect to me? Oh, that's also, yeah, that, that would also work. Although I will say I have just successfully connected, I think. Uh, oh yeah, perfect. Oh, testing one, two. Okay, so I think we are connected, Anne, but... No, mine crashed, just a minute. That's never happened to me before. It might be because I'm on an internal version of the app. That's, I think, what's happening. And that's my that's my mistake. I should have done, uh, done that differently. So I actually, uh, I'm not using the, the App Store version. So what we can do... And is that I'm going to connect on my other device with you here, here, actually, let me do this. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's 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 because I'm on an internal build, I think. Is it working right now? So I just it crashed again. Yeah, that's because okay, let me ch connect with you and on a different device. So here I'm going to and that's actually good for our demonstration anyway. So I'm going to try to connect with Anne even though Anne and I are not in the same room, right? We're very far apart. Um so I'm going to, so just so that everyone sees what I'm doing, let me go back to the main screen. I first, I click on add a person. Then I go to uh, my contact list right here, Ava contacts. And then the top of my screen, I have the ability to search for other users. 
In this case, I'm going to search for Anne. So I click on that. And I have to type in uh, Anne's name or Ava name, which I believe is Anne Thomas. Am I wrong? No, Art One. I'm sorry, my bad. Art R T one. one. There you go. Yep. Okay. So Anne is right there. So I'm going to click on Anne and see if we can connect. All right. Did uh, can you see what I'm saying, Anne? Ah, there you are. Okay. So we're having a bit of a channelization issue, it looks like. So what happens is that my audio is actually coming out of Anne's computer speaker and going right into Ava. But what you can see also is that there's different colors associated to when Anne speaks and when I speak. So Anne, if you don't mind saying something into Ava. Oh, there you are, there, there it is. No, I'm so happy you're here. It's a great presentation. Um, I hope everybody learns wonderful ways to use Ava. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me actually, with that, go back to uh, the slides. Um, and, and, and I guess the main thing that I was uh, meaning to show you here with that short demonstration is so that there is different ways to connect with other individuals, but essentially... If, uh, if others have Ava, it makes it a bit easier, but also if others do not have Ava, they can still connect with you using the web application. So when other people use their own devices and they speak into their device, it shows up on your screen as a different speaker with a different color. So that's kind of the, 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 the real like important concept behind that. Um, okay, so I showed you this one. Then one thing here, which is kind of important to also mention is that it's possible to connect Ava with external microphones. Um, and I think Barbara, do you have a question? Oh, could you uh, unmute yourself um, on Zoom, your microphone? Okay, you... am I good? Yeah. Can you, hear, can you hear me, Peter? Yes, perfect, yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the QR code is a new concept to me. I found mine. Finally, but nice. does everybody have their personal QR code, even if they don't have Ava? That's a great, great question. No. So the, the QR code is, lives within Ava, specifically that QR code, at least. So the Ava app is one that, uh, that, that provides an, a QR code to each user. Um, there might be other applications that, that you use today or other services or products that, that, that include a QR code, but it's not per definition the case. And so not each individual has a QR code, not, not like you have a, a phone number or a social security number or something like that. That's not, that's not at all the, the case, no. Um, yeah. But you might actually, so what you might find, and I've seen this a lot in, in the recent times, with um, a lot of restaurants, they, uh, of course, for them to be uh, more uh, COVID friendly, they are reducing the, 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 the things you touch and, and hold and stuff. So they've gone from having physical menus to digital menus. So a lot of the restaurants actually nowadays, they have these QR codes. You might find a sticker on the dinner table or they might have a little sign with this with the QR code on there. And that's essentially a way for a guest to walk into the restaurant to scan the QR code. And then that takes them to the menu of that restaurant in a digital version. So you don't have to hold uh, the menu. That's one of the ways that QR codes is being used, which is it's a different way of how we use QR codes in Ava. I don't know if that's helpful. Uh, so so what I'm, what I think you're saying is that you do need Ava on your phone to get the QR code. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so, um, cause yes. originally, cause originally what confused me is you said people don't need to download Ava to I'm sorry, yeah. access the captioning, but in yeah. fact, you need the Ava to have a QR code. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a really good point you're making. So indeed, there's something I forgot to say, which is that others, 
who are joining your conversation do not necessarily need an Ava account or Ava to be downloaded on their device. That is okay. only account if they are- was a key word. Account was a key word. Yeah, I guess that's oh, a good point. Okay, got it. And, okay. and, and, and that's only if those individuals are joining your conversation as a guest. However, oh, okay. if they okay. themselves want to start hosting conversations, then they will need to uh, set up their own Ava account. Ah, uh, okay, that's that's good. I, I that clarifies a lot. There, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question, and uh, <clears throat> and it's good feedback for me. I need to I need to change the way I, I present that because that's a really uh, that was a bit confusing. So I apologize. Um, so what I was gonna say here is that what I've just shown you is okay. I can have my device, and then I can connect with somebody else's device. If, however, I do not want to connect with other people's devices and I just want to use my device only, however, the speaker might be far away, then I need to figure out some other way to get their audio accurately transcribed into AVA. So there's different ways to do that. You can use a wired microphone or a Bluetooth-based microphone. One microphone that actually has a Bluetooth capability uh, for example, is also a Roger pen. I know some people might use those. Um, so there's some, not all, but some FM systems that have a Bluetooth capability. If they do, then typically it is actually possible to connect the FM system with your hearing aids at the same time as you connect them with your mobile device so that you can see the captions on AVA while you're also getting the audio enhancement uh, to your hearing aids. That's, a, that's something you can do. Now, you can also, if you walk into, say, a worship center or a space where there's an already existing audio infrastructure, there's ways to actually connect AVA with that existing audio infrastructure so that you get the most accurate captions. So we have actually gone and captioned large events as well as a lot of uh, uh, services today in worship centers across the country are using actually AVA to caption the, the, the services. And what happens then is that you can just walk in, perhaps there is a QR code on the door while you walk in that you can scan, or you already have that service in your, in your contact list. And it's really easy for you to just sit down and then receive the captions on your personal device. So basically what I mean to say with this is that while the default is the microphone at the bottom of the device, as I was pointing out earlier, there are many ways to expand the way you're using other microphones to get better uh, accuracy and better audio quality from speakers who are far away or from multiple speaker conversations. And this is just a quick demonstration. So here, um, there is a, a microphone that's connected. It's a wired microphone that's connected to uh, my uh, uh, shirt. That's myself again. And then the other individual is able to get the captions that way. And then the next one here is where I actually have a Bluetooth microphone clipped onto my uh, shirt. Um, and, and that way we get the captions, but it's possible. So in these two examples, there's still two devices, but you can have a microphone that's connected just to your device and you can sit in, uh, say, at an, a, a lecture or a workshop or, or some something like this, and you walk up to the speaker. You give the speaker your Bluetooth microphone. If they have that, if they wear that during the session, then you can just easily follow the captions of what they're saying on your device during the session. Um, okay, so, and I hope I'm okay on time. This kind of concludes a little bit the in-person situations of using AVA, where you use your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop, but it's all in-person interactions, one-on-ones, groups, uh, or, or, or like being part of an audience. Of course, in the past year, we've shifted to a world that is more of a hybrid world, uh, where some of the things are, are actually, the past year, everything was digital, but now we're shifting to a hybrid world, actually. Now things are going to be in part in person and in part virtual. So we need to have a tool that can help us in both worlds. I've just talked about how it helps in the in-person world. Now I'm gonna talk about how it helps in the 
virtual world. So what I was showing you earlier during the session uh, at the very beginning when I had my own captions up, those are Ava closed captions. So this is a relatively new product and it's essentially a, a product that works on desktop, meaning laptops or computers, which either are Windows or Mac, those are Apple computers. Um, and you install that software on your computer. And then um, I'll do a demonstration now, actually, which, which kind of shows you how it works. But I think the key thing I want to convey to everyone is that if you are, have this installed on your system, on your computer, you can essentially use it to caption any digital content, whether it's a Zoom conversation where the host has forgotten to turn the captions on, or you might be attending a different conference platform. I don't know, maybe it's Hopin or WebEx or Microsoft Teams or what have you. Um, perhaps you're doing a FaceTime call with a family member. Um, maybe you have, you're watching a YouTube video or some other uh, type of video that has no captions already to it. With Ava CC, you can caption all of those different things and you're not dependent on anybody else. So you can have control and independence with this tool. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you what that looks like. So I will, let's see, go out of this presentation for a second. And then I need to pull up our Ava app again. Where are we? Oh, here we are. Oh, this Peter, is this something Something that's been really valuable for me has been to use Ava for, for podcasts because I could never understand those before at all. And now uh, Ava on the desktop, that's no issue. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks for, 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 uh, for bringing that up. And, and that is actually a good, um, a good example. So I'm going to close this session here. But yeah, that's another form of digital content that you can actually caption with this tool. So, so basically I'll start, uh, well, this is basically the beginning. So I have the app on my computer. Let me close this here because it's kind of distracting a little bit. Um, I have the app on my computer. I open it and I get to see this screen. There's different options, but the main one and the most important one and the one I'm gonna show you is if that I say, and, and you have to imagine, so, so, okay, a scenario would be that I, I start Zoom, say Zoom webinar as we are doing today. And the host has forgotten to turn on the captions. And I'm not, I don't want to ask the host to do that because I'm not close enough to the person or for whatever reason, I'm not going to ask them. So I'm like, okay, how do I get captions now? What I can do is I start the Ava desktop app and I say, start captions. So it's one click only. And then it automatically turns into this little box. Perhaps this is a bit small because I'm sharing a big screen with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this box. So it's a bit bigger. You can change the font size. You can change the size of the box. You can move it around your screen. So it can be in the top. It can be in the bottom. It can be on the right or left, whatever is sort of your preference. I'll put it in the middle now because I know that otherwise it might be uh, overlapping with the other captions. And I apologize if, it, if I was doing that a second ago. But the point is that um, that same Zoom webinar session where I otherwise would not have had captions, I just clicked one button and I have this box sitting at the bottom of my screen and it's captioning for me. Um, of course, now the question is how does it caption other people? So I'm actually curious if somebody would speak right now, if it's going to caption uh, what they're saying. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to go ahead and, and speak. <laughs> and do you want to say something yeah. maybe? <laughs> we have a question in the chat that's very interesting to tuck under your belt to answer later. Oh, great. So if I go to a place of worship, I can connect a Bluetooth mic to my smartphone, place it near the speaker, and I will be able to caption the sermon. So the question is, how do you caption a sermon in a church? Okay. And 
obviously it said it picked up everything that I said. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. And also, I see I see that Jill, you, do you have a question? Because you have your hand raised. And note that you are um, muted right now on Zoom. Yes. Um, my question is, when you're riding into a car, say I'm carpooling with three other women to a book club meeting, and they're having this very lively conversation, and I can't understand. So how do I, you said they don't have to download Ava. How yeah. do I QR them? I don't get that. Okay, great question. So I'm thinking about the best way to, uh, to demonstrate that. So I think, um, They all so have first iPhones. Of, yeah, or, so I think or Androids, whatever. Yeah, so the, the way to do it actually, I, I know how to show it to you. It's actually the very same thing as I as um as is in the in the slide deck. So let me actually go and pull that up. Where is it? Right here. It's this very slide here. So um let me move this over here. Okay. So this here um, is, is an example of um, the, the, the lady in this video does not have Ava on their device. They do not have the app installed. And I am showing them my QR code. I do have the app. I'm the host of the conversation. And I show them my QR code and they're gonna scan it. So there you go. And what happens, I'll pause it for a second. Actually, let me back up. Whoa. Sorry about that. Uh, pause here. As soon as she scans the QR code, what you're seeing on her phone is a little pop-up. This is basically um, a, a thing that is built into iPhones. So it's not has nothing to do with Ava. Every iPhone has that, which is that with an iPhone, and in most Android phones actually have this as well, you can simply use the camera on the device to scan a QR code. And when you do that, in this case here, that little pop-up is, is basically the iPhone of this lady recognizing this QR code and saying, oh, I know what to do next. Then she clicks on that little notification. So watch what she does next. She clicks on it and then it starts to open our web application. So it doesn't open the download or anything. It opens the web application and it automatically joins my conversation. So you can see actually here, it's already did that. So in a couple of seconds, it's connected to my conversation. And then as soon as I start speaking, it shows up in her phone. She can also turn on her microphone. And when she starts speaking, it shows up in mine. And so with your friends, they can all scan the QR code, connect you through the web app, and you can start seeing what they have to say. Of course, when you're in a car, make sure you're not distracted while driving. But <laughs> I'm usually the passenger. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, no, so, so, so that is definitely something you can do. And I've actually um, gotten quite a bit of feedback from some, some of our users who they will have their phone mounted in a, in a, in a holder and they are actually able in the car to follow conversations now, which is, 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 is not an, an atypical situation. I've heard that use case quite a few times. So if I go back uh, to the desktop application, okay. what I wanted to point out to everyone is that what we use to understand the other speakers. So what happened when Anne was speaking and when Jill was speaking is that you could see their captions. It's sort of magic actually, because Ava has just started separate from Zoom, but somehow Ava is able to still pick up the other speakers. So the way it works is we use uh, something called internal audio. And Anne, you have something to say? Yeah, I have an image of Ava in my car. Would you like me to show it? Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Okay, so hang on one second. Um... Should I continue to explain while you find that? Or you, you have it ready to go? Yeah, I just pulled it up just a minute. Oh, okay. I'm gonna stop sharing then. Okay. 
So I have a, um, a vent holder in my car here. And I actually did the, the demo in um, the, past, the driver's seat, but obviously I don't do this when I drive. And if you see on the side, those two clips, those are microphones that you can piggyback. It's made by a company called iRig Lab. And so you can hand one to the person in the back seat so they don't even need to connect to Ava. You're just connecting as you go. Nice. Okay, back to you, Peter. Thanks. Thanks, Anne. And this is great. Thanks for showing that. Um, so um, one thing, so if I open the, 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 the desktop app, you can actually see what's happening here. So on the left-hand side, this is where my menu is. There is here a microphone menu, so I can select different microphones. And the microphone I have selected currently is called Ava Mic. The Ava Mic is the one that takes the internal audio from your system. What that means is that even while I'm wearing headphones, I could be wearing over-ear headphones or the ones I'm wearing right now, these are Apple AirPods. So I hear everyone on this call through here, but Ava hears everyone through the internal audio system. That also means that when I'm watching a video or when I'm doing anything else, perhaps there's people in the room, my family might be around, I don't want them to have to hear or listen to everything I'm watching. So I can simply just turn on Ava mic and get the captions of whatever content I'm watching on my computer without necessarily having the audio to physically come out of the system. So I hope that's, that's helpful as, as a means of explaining a little bit more, but that is what we call Ava closed captions. Um, back to the slides. Actually, I don't think I, I should have, or I, had, I didn't have to do that there. Okay, so back here, Ava CC. Okay, there's one more thing I wanna talk about and then I'll sort of wrap up so that we can go into the question and answers because I know we're kind of like running into the, the last part of the session. So this is not an unimportant thing though. This is actually one of our most prominent developments in the past year or two, namely everything you've seen so far during this demonstration is based on machine-based captions. So AI-based uh, captions. And we realize, you know, after having been in the space for now good seven years, having developed the different tools, getting so much feedback from our users, we realize that there are situations where AI captions, machine-based captions are not going to, they're just not going to cut it. They're not going to do it. You know, like they hit a ceiling of accuracy, whether it's because the speaker has a thick accent, because there's a lot of background noise, for whatever reason, the accuracy is not sufficient for you to actually get a full understanding of what is happening. And in those situations, you're going to need something else. There's a good reason why we have a captioner on this call, right? It's to get proper, good quality, accurate captions. And so the thing is, we also see captioners and interpreter interpreters as the number one ultimate solution today. However, we also understand by listening to our users that there is limitations to those services. Some, in some situations, I might not have the budget available to get a captioner or, uh, or, or an interpreter to come to my session. In some situations, it might be too last minute and I won't be able to get my captioner or interpreter to come over for you know, a meeting that's happening in three hours or something is rescheduled. You know, there's all sorts of reasons why I might not have that access that I need in that situation. And that's why we've developed Ava Scribe, which essentially combines the machine-based captions with human professional transcribers who are able to connect remotely, somewhat similar to you know, a remote captioner. Um, and it essentially allows us to, to increase the accuracy of the service and to make it so that if there is contextual information that the machine doesn't understand, that there's actually a human listening and, and helping to kind of uh, provide that. So let me quickly show you what that looks like. And I unfortunately 
was unable to arrange a scribe for this very session because I wasn't sure what time we we're going to have this demo or I was going to demonstrate this. But what I can show you is kind of the concept of how this works. So within Ava, whether I'm using it on my mobile device, on my tablet, or on a computer, it doesn't matter whether I'm using the web app, desktop app, or the mobile. I have the option to request the scribe service to join my session by clicking on this improve accuracy and then they say scribe captions and what it's doing right now and you can it's maybe a bit hard to see but in the top of my screen it's actually requesting the scribe to join so this is basically calling our scribes and saying hey i need a scribe to join my session and what you can see is that it stopped blinking. So now there's a scribe in the conversation and the uh, microphone has turned green instead of blue. So that's another indicator of the fact that the scribe is actually here. And so let me see if when I make a mistake, for example, if I say my own name, that's often a very good way to make Ava uh, fail, Peter Dubodans. That's not, not, that's not too bad actually, except, oh, well, it even corrected Peter. So <laughs> uh, let's try that again. My name is Peter Dubodans. Okay, uh, I need to try something else. <laughs> I'm from Tilburg. Okay, there you go. Oh, even that was okay. So what I, I guess what I'm trying to show you is that if there's mistakes, then the scribe will, will follow basically the ASR or the machine-based captions and then make corrections to the transcript. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry, it's maybe not the most clear demo, but like that's the concept I hope is clear um, that, you know, the, the, the thing you see there is basically our scribe who is like listening in and then correcting the transcript as it goes. Um, okay, so that is that part. Um, and then to close off so that we can actually enter into sort of a Q&A um, what we're trying to do again um, is really to figure out how can we give you the fastest and easiest access to captions anywhere you go, right? And there's some examples here in a work environment. This is actually a large event that we captioned. Here is a, an example of a, a, a poster that was used with the QR code so that when I walk into the breakout session at this event, I scan the QR code and I immediately get the captions for that session. And I go to the next one and I get captions there. And, you know, fun fact is that one of the people who we actually ended up captioning was uh, Michelle Obama, uh, which was fun for us to do, of course. Um, and this is like a hospital environment where they have tablets uh, rolling around on stands. And by the way, thanks to Anne also for advocating. Uh, we, we are making strides to work with uh, organizations like UCSF and others um, to, to, to see how we can make more access possible in those kinds of environments. And ultimately, this is what we do it for. This is what is the fuel of our company and the reason why every day we're working hard to make this happen is this kind of feedback. And I won't go through all the different feedbacks, but it's, go ahead. What's your question? Oh, I thought someone had a question, but um, so the, to finish off with, we also work with some larger organizations, small startup to really large organizations. And so for those of you on the call who are affiliated to organizations, happy to have a conversation and see how we can make your organization more accessible. I think to conclude, you know, we look forward to working with any of you to kind of get feedback and have you try it out and essentially um, make the world more accessible together. That's it for me and I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs> And thanks also, thanks everyone for listening. I know that was quite lengthy. So I hope I didn't bore you, um, but I appreciate all the questions and, and um, yeah. <laughs> so Peter, you wanna quit sharing your screen? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Okay. May I ask a question? Do you know who I am? Okay. I just went to my TV and I looked again at CNN, Fox, MSB, whatever. And why don't they, why, why don't they use this device? They're always delayed. 
They're so delayed. I want to put my hand through the television. I didn't even know it was possible. Yeah. I'm hearing you like I'm hearing you. Yeah, and you know, that's a really good point. Um, and I They've think got a lot all of the money in the world. I think we all have frustrations around um, uh, subtitles uh, for some of the television, like broadcasting. Uh, it, it happens quite often that there's significant delays um, and sometimes even that there's completely wrong subtitles uh, associated with what we're watching. Um, and I, I agree, I, I'm not exactly sure how to best address that, but um, ultimately that's where I think it would be great to have professional captioners um, associated to uh, to that. And I think that to some extent there might be, I, I'm not even exactly sure what's the kind of the technology or how it's being done today, but surely we need to figure out a way to have less delay on that because you should be, you know, more real time connected to the television or any content that shows up. Um, so thanks for bringing that up, Holland. Yeah, you need to file a complaint with the FCC. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, if if there's no specific, oh, actually, Holland, you, you're uh, you're muted again. Um, your microphone is muted. I I just why can't they use Ava? Well, so one thing I will say is is that you know as I was talking about the main. Uh, so the machine-based captions are very quick, right? They have le less latency, but they also make mistakes. And so when you have, you know, especially with more complex vocabulary or speakers with an accent, then it's, it's you might not want to use purely and only machine-based captions, even though the latency is so great. At that point, you want to see how you can actually leverage professional captioners because they won't make as many mistakes and they can pick up typically on complex vocabulary and like all that kind of stuff. So, but certainly um, there's a lot of room for improvement. So, and we're happy to have that conversation with the FCC or whoever is sort of pushing that agenda and see how we can maybe partner up with, with professional captioners to provide a service that's faster and more accurate, but yeah. Um, okay. thanks Thank again. Uh, yeah. Thanks again, Holland. <laughs> also, maybe I'll quickly sort of address the question, uh, that was asked about, uh, uh, the worship, uh, situation. And I'm trying to see if I have maybe, um, a quick example, uh, of that, uh, or actually, so maybe if there's other questions, let me answer the questions. And then I'll, in the meantime, I'll, I'll look for, um, I'll look for something that I can show here. Yeah. So Peter, Tony Farrick asked the question and he's the next person with his hand up. So Tony, I'm going to um, ask you to ask your question and then can you go ahead and do that? Yes. Uh, so that was about that worship. Because uh, just yesterday I had somebody at, uh, asking me about um, uh, providing cart subtitles for a, uh, for a church service. And this certainly looks like a good application for it. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, uh, so this was a great opportunity. I've used your app in the past and uh, I'm impressed with how uh, your demos here with, with the exception of that crash, but I'm sure <laughs> and I understand you, you, you were using a, uh, maybe an alpha release or something, but apparently, uh, so I'm impressed. I'm really looking forward to getting that, uh, getting this back up again and, and uh, working with it. So thank you very much. I've learned quite a bit today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And maybe if I may, like, I'll quickly do this here. Uh, can you see this YouTube? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to skip through different parts here so that you get a sense of what we're doing. This is the same setup as we have in several uh, worship centers in, in the US right now and in other places. Generally, when there is a, a, an audio infrastructure or a space like a public space, like a large event space or whatever, where there's audio infrastructure in place, what we do actually is we uh, connect and I'll just kind of play this real quick. Um, what we do is we set up 
uh, our device in connection to the audio infrastructure that's in place. So in this case, I mean, with larger events, you typically have these AV people who, you know, have professional gear. And simply what they do is they send through their audio system, they send the same audio signal as they would send to the speakers in the room so that everyone can hear it. They send it to us and we caption that. So this device here is captioning that as the host so that anyone who walks in can do can join as a guest, right? So this is um, this is an example of like several. Um, so this this is this is if you were a guest, this could also be a worship center. Right now, this is a uh, an example of an event. But I'm scanning the QR code, and as soon as I do that, it connects me to the session. So it's captioning right now that session, right? So that's how we essentially do that. I don't know if there's other uh, examples of. No, I think I think that kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of that. So that's a way for us to connect with the existing audio infrastructure, which means that the speakers don't have to wear an additional microphone that you bring along. And you don't have to bring along an extra microphone. You just walk in and use your phone to get the captions and the, everything else is set up. Right. So so that's the advantage of, of doing that. Can you explain how um the av connects to ava yeah uh let me see um AV. i'm just trying to see if i can find uh the there is an article okay i think it's this one yeah, okay, this is perfect. Uh, here, let me share my screen again. This here is a, a picture. It's not it's not super perfect, but at least it gives you a little bit of a sense of, of what is happening. So um, there's different ways to do this, by the way. It depends on kind of the AV personnel, what technology are they using, like what's kind of the setup. But typically, as I was mentioning, what happens in a space with, with an audio infrastructure is they have microphones on stage or whatever. Those microphones are feeding into some type of audio board, like a mixer, like this one here. That, and that there's cables going from that to the speakers in the space. And then along with the cables that go to the speakers, we add one cable. So we plug it into one of the ports in the audio in the mixing board. And that runs to an AVA device. In this case, in this picture, we're using a phone, but you could also do that with a laptop or with anything that you might have access to. So you run this audio cable into the device. And depending on what that looks like, you might need an additional piece of hardware, which is this iRig, which is an off the shelf piece of hardware that converts the audio from this analog signal into a digital signal so that the app actually picks it up. And then it starts captioning. So that's all. And, that, and, and what we do is then we make sure that that device that's captioning is broadcasting the captions to anyone who would like to receive them, right? So that, that it's easy to access that as a guest. I don't know if that helps and if that answers the question. Okay. Hey, Barbara Bottomley, you're next. Okay. I don't know whether this is a question that that applies directly to Ava. Um, a number of, of companies have have apps that offer captioning for your your cell phone. And is Ava offer captioning for your cell phone? Is my question. Remember yeah. my first. Does Ava offer captioning for your phone, Peter? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I, then that's probably one of them that I've, uh, yours isn't the only one. I have the Ava app, but I have a couple of others that I've tried. And when I get very to the very bottom of the application, they ask for the last four digits of my social security number. Okay, that's interesting. Ooh. Why do I need to give that? Um, so I have been hesitant to give that information because I've tried to keep it off of my cell phone. So yeah, I would... Um, yeah, I, would, <laughs> I, I, I don't, sorry. I presume that Ava's asked for the same thing. No, so 
Ava does not ask for such information. Um, and I don't necessarily think that you should uh, provide this to an app. Uh, I mean, it depends kind of what kind of app we're talking about, but I would be hesitant if I were you to give this out. Um, and it's certainly not common, I don't think, uh, but it's also not something that Ava is going to ask you for. Um, sure. At most, I mean, there's different ways to, you can you can sign up or log into our service, one of which is using your phone number. So at most, we're going to ask you for your phone number. Um, we might also ask you, um, so we can give you a better experience, what's your level of hearing loss? Like we might say, hey, are you hard of hearing or are you deaf? Are you hearing? Because then we tailor our experience accordingly. Um, and that's kind of the limit of what we want to ask you in terms of your, your personal information, because we, we want to be careful with that. <laughs> Barbara, okay. Barbara, yes. Ava is not a telephone communication via the telephone. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. Okay. So Ava is not like making a telephone call. No, I didn't think so. Okay. So okay. I just wanted to that's make sure why. because that's so hard for I, some people to understand. I thought that these companies that are offering captioning on your phone are different than Ava, but I wasn't I sure. I didn't know whether they, they seemingly are promising that when you pick up the phone, you automatically have captioning. I know that I can, the problem with Ava is when a phone, I can't use it on the phone because the phone is Ava, you know? I mean, yeah. I answer the yeah. phone, I can't use Ava because I'm already on the phone. It's like, a, yeah. you know, that kind of no, thing. That's it's a great point. And so right, right now, we are, this is not part of our focus. So in terms of what we offer today, um, phone calls is not something where I recommend using Ava. I would recommend, uh, well, of course, there's the traditional solutions like Caption Call. I think there's a few others. But there's also an app called InnoCaption, which you might want to check out. It's actually very uh, good, I think. Um, so those would be typically solutions that would be more fit for phone call captions. Okay, I'll try those. See if they ask for my social security number. That's where I that's where I've ended up with a problem. So Barbara Bottomley to register for Eno Caption, you register online prior to using it on your phone. Okay. okay so, so maybe they don't you can contact okay. me later about that's it. what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Diane Gross. Hey. <laughs> Okay, hello. Um, hey. There was some, I was laughing when you were talking about showing how somebody is outside a conference room door and you, you know, using the QR code to get onto Ava so they could listen to a speech outside the door. And because I was, my mind <laughs> was going to what happens if you're walking through a hotel and there's an event you're interested in, but it costs hundreds of dollars to get in. You could just look outside the door and listen <laughs> in anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> that's where Good point. I was going. Um, but I was asking, I just put the Ava app on my phone and I noticed when it downloaded, it was saying something about may have in-app purchases. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah, so um, that, that's actually good that you bring this up because it you know, kind of prompts me to talk a little bit about that side of, of things. So in the basis, we offer free services, um, which is basically when you go and, and download the app from the app or play store, or you go to our website and access the desktop or web application software, you can use this for free. However, there's some limitations. Um, there's limitations around the session length. So if you are attending, say, a two hour long session, that's not with the free version, you'd have to restart uh, after 40 minutes because it's capped at 40 minutes you can still use it for the two-hour session you just have to restart it that's all um, however if you want to run all the way through without having to restart that's when you would upgrade to a paid service um, so that's actually what that's referring to um, and there's also differences in terms of the accuracy level so with our free version it's not as accurate as with some of our paid versions 
Um, and there's a couple of other differences in terms of the features that are made available, the level of service we are able to provide and such. Typically, what we try to do, as I was sort of pointing out a bit in my presentation, is what we try, we try to work with organizations to sponsor AVA for the people, uh, like for their students or for their employees or for the individuals within their organization that can benefit from the services. So that's typically how we try to go. So to avoid having you make a lot of costs to have more access. Um, but yeah, that's that that speaks to the in-app purchases, I think. Okay, another question. Um, I have a severe vision loss. So if I've got an app open on my phone, I'm reading it like this, even with glasses. Um, on that free service, is there an option to be able to enlarge the font? Yeah. So you can, uh, within Ava, you can change the font size. Um, if you find that the text size isn't large enough, even mm -hmm. if you go to the maximum font size, mm -hmm. please give us that feedback because then we can actually, you know, take that into consideration and potentially change it so that there is a bigger font size available for you. Okay, thank you. So, Diane, the way, yeah. the way you make the font bigger, just spread your fingers on mm -hmm. the screen. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that's, and it makes... Spread them and it makes it bigger and do this and it makes it. Yeah. Bigger. Okay. Now that, that's another thing that makes me laugh. I was in a class where we were talking about Zoom. And so she was talking about Zooming on the screen. And there is a program for people with vision loss called Zoom Text. And then there is Zoom, the, um, the platform we're using. And so much, there were five people in the class, four of them had never used any of these things. And there was so much confusion. It just, every time I hear Zoom, I thought, which one are you talking about today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. No, no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank My you. friend, Sherry Perizzoli is next. Hello, everyone. Peter, thanks. This was a great presentation. Um, I learned so much today. I really awesome. am a visual learner. And so seeing you uh, demonstrate it in real time was especially helpful for me. Great. Um, I so I have some questions. And I think one of our biggest challenges is um, being able to easily communicate the benefits of AVA to an organization like a hospital mm. or a theater or someone else, um, in, in, and especially in, a, in the specific applications that I think that AVA differentiates itself from the other caption apps. And um, I, I can only use words so much to describe this process and people technically kind of understand it, but they really want to see what you've just done. They want to see it demonstrated in real time. And, and so I noticed, and maybe I'm wondering if maybe we can work with you if you don't have that already to create some video that's a little bit more, uh, more accurately yeah. represents the, the situation. Um, because I've been looking for that and I, and I've come up to what looks pretty close, but I haven't been able to find something that really shows those, all those benefits and, yeah. and, and, and Zan notes, you know, it's great to, I just feel like we have the potential to reach so many more people. If I have a visual tool that I could just send to someone and say, yeah. Look, this is how you could use this at your hospital. This is how you could use this at your place of worship, or this is how you know you use this in your conference center. I'm getting a lot of information of how I can use it as an individual. And as a matter of fact, you know, I do have a paid account. And when the um, when the bill came in, my husband said, "So how are you going to use this to really benefit 
your whole community. And, and so I think that that's you've given me a lot of ideas today of how I can do that. But I do have a yeah. question in terms of like, and this may be a simple, stupid question, but um, so um, I go, to, so I have more than one house. So let's say I want to down, have the desktop version. Can I download this desktop version on multiple devices, multiple computers or wherever I might be so I can do that? And yep. uh, and I'm assuming I need the latest version of the of the app to be able to take advantage of the QR code and, and all of that, correct? Yeah, I would generally suggest to stay you know up to date with with the more recent uh, uh, you know updates that we provide uh, because um, there's always improvements and 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 for example that bug that happened earlier, I'll have to investigate if that was because I was using internal build or not. But if that's something that is actually in the product that everyone has in their hands, then that will be fixed uh, in the next update ASAP. So so that's why, you know, it's generally a good thing to keep updated with the software. Um, and to answer the first part of your question, you can have Ava installed on as many devices as you'd like. The one thing that is uh, not really possible is that you use it on all those devices at the very same time. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't really use it on a phone and a tablet and a computer all in the same conversation because then it's like connecting to itself and talking to itself. So the app gets confused as opposed to, you know, you have it on all your different devices and you just use it on this one moment and on the, the next one, like the other one on the next moment, right? So that's that's not a problem. Okay, great. And I just have one last question. And um, so I actually have more than one Ava account or Ava name. And and so is the solution there? Can I uh, can I apply Ava to my different accounts, or should I just get rid of one of the accounts? Um. I, I mean, typically, so when you get a paid subscription that is associated to one account, um, you could, if you want, transfer that subscription to the other account, which would, you know, you'd have to come like tell us or request and say, hey, I would like to move it over. It's not a problem. Um, what you can also do, um, I mean, you definitely don't have to get rid of the other account. If you, it depends on your preference. Because what you can do if you have two, two accounts is you can actually join yourself in that case, right? You can have two devices where you have one with the paid account and one with the guest account, if you will. And then you would be able to have two devices connected to one another. And potentially you could give the second device to your friend if they don't have one with them, for example. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Good. Great, great tools. And uh, I think this is going to be really, really useful for so many uh, people in our community. And, and again, you know, uh, I think, you know, having that piece that I can yeah. take to an organization to say, you know, if you set this up for me, not only can I use it at, at the meetings for me, but there are probably four or five other people who are going to benefit as well. So, yep. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know, um, Sherry Parazzoli is the president of HLA Washington, and she's the chair for the HLAA Get in the Hearing Loop Committee. And we're both on that committee together. So thanks, Sherry. Uh, Sarah Oser. Hi. Um, thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, kind of along the lines of what Sherry's asking. Let's say we have a monthly chapter meeting and with maybe 10 people. Could I have Ava then on my phone and then have a QR code and then everybody, people come in and they would then scan the QR code and they would then, um, how would that work? How would they, then it connect, it somehow connects to the microphone in the room or I'm trying to think of how it could be used in a small meeting uh, yeah. scene. Yeah, and that's, thanks for this question. Um, and I'll sort of talk to the technical sort of side of this. I also want to point out that, you know, one of the, I think, things that we are really trying to always improve, but also to provide to the community is 
not just a technical solution and say, here's where you downloaded, good luck, have fun. You know, we have the people who are part of our support are people who are very well versed and are also very strongly mission driven. So that means that if you have so, this type of question, we're going to do our best and go out of our way to help you figure out the best solution because every situation is different. And really depending on you know, what the situation looks like, there might be a different way to best implement AVA or something else, maybe not AVA per se, right? So um, I just wanna put that out there. Um, <laughs> the, the technical okay. side of the answer is that for that very meeting, if you want, if, so if there is an existing audio infrastructure, if there are already microphones somehow distributed in that space, then we should look at how can we connect with those because they're probably high quality microphones. They're, you know, everyone is speaking into them. Great. So let's use that. If that's not the case, however, and it's just 10 people who are all around in a circle or a big table or whatever the situation may be, you could have Ava on your device and you can ask the other individuals to use their personal devices to connect with you. Um, that can happen through a QR code. There's different ways to do it. It might also be the case that you have 10 people, but say you have only five people that are connected to the AVA session. As long as those five people are somewhat distributed equally around the room, you still have five microphones that are listening to the whole conversation. So it helps you to have you know, a, a, a pretty okay transcript for that session, most likely. And alternatively, finally, if none of the other people is interested in helping helping out, so to say, or using uh, Ava, and you're the only one who has Ava, then you might want to consider bringing along a microphone of some sort so that you can better pick up what people are saying, right? But also I want to point out that, and this is maybe something I should have said earlier on, the accuracy of the captions is very dependent on how close people are to a microphone, whether it's the microphone on the device or a Bluetooth microphone or any type of microphone. So if they're very far away, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for Ava to, to provide good quality captions. So that's an important thing to, to keep in mind. I see, okay, thank you. So Sarah, years ago, one of the driving forces in the HLA DV board was that we meet as a small group and the place that we, so, and we needed captions. So we have extensively used Ava in a kind of situation like what you're talking about. We connected Ava to a projector and projected it on the wall. I've connected Ava to a television, which could be anybody's home. And I'll pull up the picture and show you. This is Ava on a regular TV. So any place, as long as you can project Ava, you can have the possibility of having captions for a small group. And I can talk to you some more about connecting that to a small uh, portable hearing loop or a, um, the same one that you use for your TV. Okay, thank you very much. Nice. Does anybody have any more questions for Peter? <laughs> Well, Peter, I'm delighted that you could join us today. Um, Peter and I maybe talk once every six weeks or something, and he's been so busy lately, I haven't had an opportunity to see him. So thank you for, and it was a big deal for him to try and fit us in today. So thank you very much for joining us. And we have thank a you. few more um, things that we're going to talk about. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go. Um, All right. If anybody has any large questions that they just want to send to me and I'll filter them to Peter so that he might have them all together, it might be easier to answer, um, please feel free to do that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Anne, uh, again, for hosting. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone else, for your time. Also, thanks, Corey, for uh, captioning. Uh, I know I spoke a bit fast at times, so I apologize. Um, Cool. All right. I'm 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 gonna uh, jump out. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thanks everybody. Enjoy your Saturday. Bye -bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye.
So everybody, this is the time when Bob Zastro always passes out his muffin. So here's the muffin from Bob to everybody. I'd like to remind everyone that hearing losses is a disability and that this is the 31st anniversary for the Americans with Disabilities Act. And all of us, even if, and I'll, let me back up here. It's been my experience that all of us, including my own being, all think we hear better than we actually do. And we're never really sure when we're going to really understand and when we aren't. So that uncertainty piece, I know that I generally, earlier when I had better hearing, would kind of push that away and say, oh no, I'm doing just fine. But then what happens, you're in the situation and all of a sudden you can understand a couple people just fine, but then you can't understand anybody or you can't understand this last person. So I really want to encourage everybody who's part of our community to always ask for communication access. If it turns out in that situation you didn't need it, that venue, those people are getting experience in what it's like to provide it. I personally believe that one of the reasons that we don't have the communication access that we need is that most of us aren't asking for it. So where should you ask for it? Everywhere. So these icons are to represent all of the different kinds of places that there'll be communication access. And some of these were not included in the ADA, but none of them are excluded in the state of California. Uh, New York and New Jersey just expanded communication access for their airports, for their transportation. And um, we need to do similar things here in California. Of course, we're a member organization. I need to remind all of you to renew your membership. It's easy to do. Just go to our website and click on the membership uh, icon that's circled in green there. You, we have PayPal. You don't need to um, subscribe to PayPal. You can just use your credit card to sign up. We'd like to, of course, thank Corey Dosti for providing us with the gold standard of captions today by being a live captioner and being present. Uh, Corey, we do not mean today by hosting Ava here that we're advocating to replace live captions. There aren't enough live captioners in America to provide all of us with the captions for all the locations that we need. Corey's book to the moon. So she doesn't have any time left. So if somebody would like to engage with Corey, though, for professional captions, her um, address is listed on our screen here. Our recording will also include all of that. And this is how you can get a hold of us. Now, earlier, before everybody came on, we had a small discussion about our next meeting is scheduled for January, uh, excuse me, July 3rd. So that's the day before the 4th of July. Do you want to keep that meeting or would you like to skip the month of July? Can you, so I'm going to ask two questions and I did, forgot to do a poll. So if you would like us to have a meeting on uh, July 3rd, please raise your hand. Ah, in the raise your hand of, um, in the, uh, reactions so that I can see, we can see how many hands are up. So right now only two people want a meeting. Does no one else want a meeting on July 3rd? Okay, so we have two people who want a meeting, so that's not anywhere near a lot of you. So I'm comfortable not having a meeting for July 3rd. So we've talked about having a picnic. We don't know how things are going to open up. 
we're not completely close to not having one this summer. Maybe it would be in September even. So I just want people to know that it's potentially still on the agenda here. Um, as all of you know who have been attending our meetings, I've had two cochlear implants this year. I have learned how to advocate and successfully and unsuccessfully in healthcare. And I'm telling you, the healthcare system in Northern California is shameful. So our next presentation that we have that's going to be for August will be about how to advocate in the healthcare uh, settings and with your physician. So I don't have anything else to add. Is there anybody who has any news that they would like to share before we close for today? And this is Diane. Can you stay on for a few minutes after the meeting? I can. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So then we'd like to thank everybody for coming. We'd like to remind everybody to please give us a donation for the Walk for Hearing, even a little one. Every little one counts. And that way you're raising your voice with ours and you're saying that you count too. So you're important. We need everybody to know that we want to be able to hear like everybody else and participate and have the best life we possibly can. So thanks for coming. See you next time. Bye.